Today in Hope for the Journey, I'm going to share with you one of the greatest stories that ever was told. It was told by the master storyteller. There was no storyteller like Jesus Christ. Some of the Savior's stories have become so well-known, amongst the most well-known tales in the English language. During the first broadcast, for example, on Monday past, we thought about the Good Samaritan. What a special story that is. And Today I'm going to tell you another story that the Saviour masterfully taught and applied to everyday life, and this is the prodigal son. We're thinking about journeys, and I'm going to talk today about the long walk home. The young man who had a long way back, but he made it, and so the story, it ends so well. Why is this story so special? Why is it, if you were to ask people that perhaps never read the scriptures, and you were to say to them, can you tell me one of Jesus Christ's parables? The prodigal son would be up there. Why is this story so special? It's so special because it's a family story, and there is nothing so precious to us as a family. And this family consisted of a father and two sons, and they loved each other dearly. There is no mother in the story. The fact that a mother is not mentioned will tell me that mother has died. And so these two sons, and particularly the youngest son, who probably had a close affinity with his mother, he has felt it particularly badly, taken it not too good. And perhaps that has been an influence upon him that persuades him to go elsewhere to leave the shelter of home. A mother would have been mentioned if she was here because her heart would have been broken, more broken than the father's. And the father felt that responsibility of both father and mother when the son went astray. And so we have these two boys. And one of the boys was a good son, wanted to get involved in the family business, wanted to live a decent life, bring honor to his father, doing the right thing. But the other boy, the younger boy, well, he was a different character completely, and every parent will see that kind of thing in their children and in their young people as they grow up. They are so different. And these two boys, they were totally different. And, and this younger son, and the story really focuses upon him, 
He had itchy feet. He wanted to get away to another country. He wanted to go away from the rural life where he was living with his family. He wanted to get to the city. He wanted to get to the place where there were more people, more young people. A place where there could be wine and women and song. A place where he could enjoy the entertainments of this life. That's what he wanted. He wanted to go away and do well. For he felt he could do better away from home. And perhaps he felt constrained, constricted by home. And so when he came of age, he asked his father for his inheritance. And there was a a custom at that time where the inheritance could have been given earlier. And so the father gave the son what he wanted. But I am sure the father gave the son his inheritance with a heavy heart. Because he knew that the outcome was not going to be good. And so the son eagerly grabbed whatever the father had given him. The father had worked for this. This son had not worked for it. And he was going to spend it and he was going to squander it. And he was determined he was going to have a good time. He never thought ahead. He never thought of that time when the money would run out. What would he do then? He wasn't worried about that kind of thing. And there are many people like that in life. They never look ahead. They just live for today. Live for what's in their pocket today. Live for the next pay packet. Just to enjoy what they can of it. They don't think ahead. They don't plan. They don't make provision. And this younger son was certainly of that ilk. But there was one thing about him, and the father would have known it. He would have become so acquainted with this boy as he grew up. The father would have become so aware of the fact that here was a young man. He was going to have to learn things the hard way. And learn the hard way he did. And so off he went to the far country, well-dressed. Off he went, springing a step. He's going to enjoy life. And off he went and, and, and he found his fun and he found his excitement and he found his pleasure and he found his friends. And I can see him there at the bar and he's buying the drinks. And I can see him there with the woman and he's treating them lavishly. And he's popular and he's a crowd around him. But then the money runs out. Has to get a job. No jobs going. No work going. Because there's a famine in this far country. The far country is facing economic deprivation. But his stomach is now hungry. He has no friends. Oh, the friends were there when he had tended to offer them, but they weren't going to give him anything when he was in need. And life can be so like that. There are friends who are fair with their friends. They're only with us when things are going well, but whenever things aren't going well, they want nothing to do with us. And these were the kinds of friends that this young man had. They weren't good friends. He was finding out the hard way, just how cruel life can be, particularly when you get your priorities all wrong. And so he wasted everything. And the only job he could get was on a farm, looking after pigs. There's nothing really wrong with looking after pigs. We enjoy pork, we eat it, but the Jews didn't take it. To the Jews, it was an unclean animal, so there was nothing worse for him in his culture than to be out living amongst the pigs, feeding them. But he was so hungry, he ate the very pig's food. What a place of humiliation. How far he had plummeted. But God had to bring him down into this low place in order to bring him up. But when he's in this low place, he suddenly came to himself. And I love those Words from the King James Version. He came to himself. In other words, he wised up. And he started to think. He thought, what am I doing here? Out here amongst these pigs. Living in this filth. Eating this disgusting food. He thought of home. He thought of his dear mother. And he thought of his precious father. And he thought of the comforts of home. He thought of the food that was at home. He thought of the nice warm bed and he thought what a fool I am look what I have turned my back on and so he made a decision I'm going to go home to my father and I'm going to say to him father I'm not worthy to be called your son I don't want to be called your son anymore I don't deserve it look what I've done but just make me one of your servants 
If I could just be back in your family again, just as a servant, I'd be happy with that. And so he made the decision. And there was something very important about that decision. He realized that he had made a colossal mistake. He realized he had gone the wrong way. He accepted that. And so off he went. And it was a long walk home. I am sure as he trudged home, he was weary. He was foot sore. Life had dealt him many a hard blow. How many months had passed, how many years had passed, we do not know. But it was a long walk home. Would my father accept me? Perhaps he'll turn me out. I wouldn't blame him. Perhaps this is a waste of time. It was a long walk home. But back home there was a father. And every day he had watched the road. He had watched for his returning boy. Never a day went past. He didn't offer a prayer to his God. He didn't pray for his son. And every day he watched that road. Watching for the wanderer. Watching for the prodigal. And so he watched and he watched. And then one day he saw a figure. He knew who it was. Now as that figure was coming through the community, there would have been people looking and saying, who's that boy? Who is he? You see, he would have looked so different. His beard would have been long and straggly. His hair would have been unkempt. His clothes, well, when you think of where he was, where he was amongst the pigs, well, he would have been stinking. His clothes would have been dirty and they would have been ragged. No longer was he that bright young man going out with a spring and a step now. The steps were slow and ponderous. But the father knew. He knew from a distance who it was, and so he comes running. And there is such an embrace. The father wasn't worried about the foul-smelling clothes. His son had returned home. I'm no more worthy to be called your son. The boy cried, and the father said, Nonsense. He brought him home. And he put the ring and his finger and he put special clothes on him and he brought shoes for him and he reclothed them and, and he called all the servants together in the whole household kill the fatted calf we're going to have a feast and he brought all his friends and my son has come home he was lost and now he's found he was dead and now he's alive you see the father had virtually given up hope of the son's survival he had Heard no messages. He had heard nothing over the time that had passed. He wondered what had happened to him. It was as if he was dead, but now he was alive. He had come home. A new life started for that young man. He experienced forgiveness. He experienced and appreciated now for the first time in his life the value of true love. The long walk home was worthwhile. Maybe I talk to you today and you're a prodigal and you've wandered from home and you've forsaken parents and the way you were brought up. Will you not take that long walk home? There's people who love you. There's people who care for you. There's people waiting to bring you back. There's forgiveness. You see, true love always forgives. That's the point. Where there is true love, there is forgiveness. But we're all like the prodigal. Because we wander from God. That's what it is to be a sinner. We forsake God. We wander from God. We go our own way. Sin ultimately is man doing his own thing. Choosing the way that seems right for him. Because this young man went out on a journey. A journey away from home. And man takes a journey away from God. He thinks that he can get pleasure and excitement and fun in this world. And that'll be enough. But it never satisfies. It's never enough. And during these days we've been traveling through, we have discovered the things of this life. What are they? They can quickly disappear. Life can change in a moment. Almost a year ago, our society was changed completely, turned on its head because of this virus. That happens every day to individuals. Bad news comes. The doctor says, I'm sorry. That type of thing is happening all the time. A knock comes in the door. Somebody has passed away. Tragedy has struck. You know, that's happening to people all the time. Life changes completely in one moment of time. And ultimately, only Christ can give us hope. Going the way of this world will never give us hope when that day of difficulty comes, but the Lord alone can give us direction. 
Perhaps you professed to be a Christian at one time. You walked with the Lord. You served the Lord. You had a desire for the things of God, but the world has got into your heart. Perhaps you need to think of the words of the hymn writer. I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. The paths of sin too long I've trod. Now I'm coming home. The tragedy was this young man had to be brought down into the pig pen before he could start thinking straight. But thinking straight, he did. And so he wised up. And I wonder today, will you wise up? Will you turn from your sin? And will you come to God who is the gracious Father? You know, that Father never gave up. He never gave up. Sometimes in our foolishness, we we are inclined to give up on people. No hope for that person. That person never changed their ways, never mend their ways. How foolish we are, how unforgiving we are. God never gives up on sinners. That's why he sent his son to the cross to die for us because he he loves us so much. And I want to tell you today, he loves you with a love that we cannot possibly begin to understand, but that love will bring you in and that love will forgive you and that love will give you eternal life. And therefore, I plead with you today, I beseech you, I call upon you, seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. There is time and there is opportunity for you to come to Jesus Christ now. I would plead with you to do this. Take this long walk home. Come to Jesus Christ as your Savior. It will be the best journey you've ever made. And yet the journey isn't so long, really. It would have been long for the prodigal, but it's just a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me from my sins. I plead with you to do this. Thank you.